Okay, so now what we're gonna be going over is the musculature and how to palpate the specific areas in the lower leg, ankle, and some of them are going to extend down in the foot, but I think it's important that we talk about it in the lower leg and ankle because this is where they originate. And when we talk about the various compartments being the anterior compartment, the lateral compartment, and then we have the two posterior compartments, I think that you need to know where these muscle bellies originate to make sense because you guys really do need to know these compartments. Um, they're very important for injuries and it, it, particularly for compartment syndrome, but there's a lot of other injuries where it's handy or good to know what's going on. So the first and most obvious in the anterior compartment is going to be your anterior tibialis. It is your strongest dorsiflexor which is bringing your foot all the way up. So bringing the dorsum, this is a dorsum part of your foot into the air. And so your anterior tibialis, the way that you would palpate it is you're gonna find your tibial crest, which is the, the really sharp kind of pointy part of your tibia. And then work just a little bit lateral to that. And then you can ask the person to dorsiflex against resistance and then see how that muscle sticks out and then you can follow it down and if you look in their ankle they should have this really nice tendon that's sticking out on the medial side this also helps with inversion so i could also have a resistant inversion and be able to stimulate that but typically we're talking about dorsiflexion with inversion when we're looking at the anterior tibialis next we have the extensor digitorum longus meaning that it goes to your four toes so two three four five and again it comes up from here and then runs down the dorsum of your foot and goes to the end so the distal ends of all of your toes and again to look at this it is going to help some with dorsiflexion of your ankle and so you'd ask them to dorsiflex and then extend their toes and hopefully you guys can see do it again for me these tendons as they're sticking up on her foot that is her extensor digitorum longus and you should also be able to see this really nice tendon that's coming through her ankle so it's going to be the most lateral of those and then the last one that you really need to know from the anterior compartment is the extensor hallucis longus if i ever talk about hallucis i'm talking about your great toe just like when we talk about the thumb we give that a particular name Halicus means great toe. And so again, this muscle comes from the anterior compartment. It's a nice long muscle. It's going to actually run in between your anterior tibialis and the extensor digitorum longus. And to get that one to kick out, you would just ask them to extend. So come down and then push up against that. And you can see that tendon run all the way through their foot. And then if they come into some dorsiflexion, you can see that tendon really stick out there as well as it's coming up the leg. Don't get it confused with your anterior tibialis, but right here is really going to be where you're going to palpate and be able to identify for sure that you are on that extensor hallucis longus tendon. So then if we look from the lateral side in your lateral compartment, we really only have three muscles that sit in your lateral compartment. For the purposes of this class, we are going to call them your fibularis muscles. Other classes might have maybe called them your peroneals, but from a true anatomic standpoint and in most textbooks, they're called your fibularis longus, brevis, and tertius. Um, and hopefully it'll also help you guys remember where it is because the fibula is lateral. So it's kind of bringing those things together for you. And these muscles all really help with eversion and then some uh, mostly help then with plantar flexion as we do that too. And so again, they're gonna come from near your fibula and they're really going to help and just go ahead and come on out for me. Do you see how these tendons are sticking out just like this? These are going to be your fibularis muscles. And there's two ways to identify which one you're on. When you do this, so your brevis is going to come down and on your foot, and we'll talk about this more when we get to the foot chapter, but you have your fifth metatarsal and it inserts right on the base of your fifth and your longus goes all the way under. So you can see this is your longus. It's the most superficial and it's going to come all the way underneath your foot and then insert down on the head of your first metatarsal. So the long part of your of your foot. So for these again, just resisting. So asking them to come out and resist and you should be able to see these really nice tendons come out. And if you just follow the tendon all the way down and it stops right here, this is going to be your brevis tendon. And then if you follow this really nice long tendon and it's gonna come and really once you get underneath the foot, you can't palpate it as well. 
because you have a lot of your other foot muscles that are going to kind of get in the way and your plantar fascia and everything else. But these muscles are certainly something that I would definitely make sure that you understand. Um, your tertius actually is different from those and it runs anterior and you can relax a little bit. It runs anterior to your lateral malleolus and it's very deep. It's very small. It's very small. And it actually, it helps with eversion, but it also helps with plantar flexion because again, it's going to run or sorry, dorsiflexion because it runs on the anterior side. And this one is, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm not going to ask you to be able to palpate it because I am actually not sure that you or anybody else can really palpate the tertius muscle, but you should know that it exists. Make sure that you know the origins and insertions and, and its actions. So then that gets us to the posterior compartments. And when we talk about the posterior compartments, we have two compartments. The one that most of you guys are gonna be most familiar with is the superficial. And within that, the first thing that you guys would recognize, and go ahead and plant your flex, so push against me, is your gastrocnemius. So it makes that kind of like heart shape that's gonna be here. And that has the two heads. So we've talked in the knee about how you have the two heads that come up and cross and it makes it a biarticular muscle. And then just deep to that, we have the soleus, and that does not cross the knee joint. So when you're going to assess these two, if you're looking at the gastroc, what you would do is have their knee be straight and then have them push against you. So go ahead, and then you're assessing the strength of the gastrocnemius. And then if you want to do the soleus, you would ask them to palpate and you would go a little bit deep. And I typically go lateral. You could technically go medial though, but I usually go lateral and then ask them to plant or flex their foot, go ahead. And then you should be able to feel, and the gastroc's gonna flex some, but you should really be able to feel the soleus contracting deep to the gastrocnemius. Now, these two muscles come together to form your triceps serrate. And it's called triceps because you have the lateral gastroc head, the medial gastroc head, and the soleus. And then sure really means conjoined tendon. So these muscles together, the gastrocnemius, lateral medial head, and the soleus come together to form your Achilles tendon. And everybody hopefully is very aware of what your Achilles tendon is. It inserts here on your calcaneus, so on the anterior posterior aspect of your calcaneus. Um, it's a very taut tendon, very strong. However, there are ways that we can hurt it and, and that will be talked about a little bit later. You also have a bursa that sits uh, just deep to that, that we can inflame. And then we do have some superficial as well. So understanding that those kind of sit in those positions, I think is important. And then we have three deep muscles to these. And from the posterior side, you can't palpate them. They comprise the deep posterior compartment. And the saying that I will give you is Tom, Dick, and Harry. So you have your posterior tibialis, that's Tom. Then you have your extensor digitorum, or not, sorry, extensor, your flexor digitorum longus. So that's Dick. And then you have your flexor hallucis longus, which is hairy. So digitorum, just like we did on the dorsal side or the anterior side, are going to go to your four toes, not your great toe. And then the hallucis is going to go to your great toe. And since they have flexor in them, you know that they're gonna curl your toes down, just like on the opposite side of the dorsum, they have extensor in it, so they're gonna bring your toes towards the ceiling. The way that you can sort of palpate, and actually I'll do it on this foot, um, is they're going to all run here on the medial side of your ankle as they come out of your lower leg, and typically, well not typically, always in all people, unless you had some kind of surgery or some kind of abnormality, they're gonna run just posterior to um, your medial malleolus. And so if I ask her to come in, so to go in inversion, hopefully you can see this tendon stick out real nice. This is your posterior tibialis tendon coming down and then inserting on right here on her foot. So it comes down to your navicular bone, which is an important bone that we'll talk about when we get to the foot. This is a very important uh, tendon to help with plantar flexion but also with inversion and when we talk about MTSS so medial tibial stress syndrome or shin splints this particular muscle is 
probably the most common cause, so issues with that muscle is the most common cause of getting MTSS. So being able to identify this muscle is really important. Also, we'll talk about if there's weakness in this when we get to the foot too, that you can have uh, navicular drop issues or arch problems. You can have all kinds of things if the tibial, uh, posterior tibialis starts giving you problems. So um, the other two from the digitorum and, and uh, the hallucis, to be able to palpate them is a little bit more difficult. So if we're gonna do the flexor hallucis longus tendon, you would ask them to push up, so to flex their toe, so coming down, and really, keep hold it for me please, Genesis. No, nope. flex your toe, curl it, there you go. And so notice you can't really see stuff coming through here very well, there's a little bit coming through, but really you're gonna feel it through this part of the foot and coming here. And then when we talk about the toes, so for the digitorum, so the flexor digitorum longus, same thing, you would ask them to flex their toes, so to curl their toes down and resist it. And again, notice it's really hard to see like the, the exact tendon sticking out, but, and then even coming through the foot because it's a deeper thing, but this is how you would identify what it's hap, um, what, if it's working or not. So if any one of these toes can't actually curl in, or if your halicus can't curl in or flex, then that's when you would be looking at damage. And you can put them on a greater stretch if you put the ankle into more dorsiflexion and ask them to do those different maneuvers or take the stretch off and ask them to do it when their ankle is in plantar flexion.